What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on OMS Hill USPSA. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that unfortunately really doesn't get a lot of recognition in the shooting sports, and that being emergency medicine. Well, let's get into it. Alright everybody, as always, if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. If you like the videos, be sure to obviously like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and do that. The genesis for today's video um, comes from a few months ago, uh, recording this video uh, February of 2021 actually valentine's day a um, few few months ago back in i believe november of 2020 there was an unfortunate accident at a uspsa local match in new hampshire where a long time uh, uspsa competitor and chief range officer uh, was unfortunately killed when he was running a competitor, another very seasoned competitor, been in the sport for a good number of years and was a range officer themselves. Um, essentially, the, the RO informed the competitor, make ready. The competitor did that. And from the information that I have, um, as of the time of shooting this video, at some point when the competitor went to put the firearm back into the holster, something happened. The firearm fell to the ground. It was an indoor range, concrete floor. Firearm fell to the ground, discharged around when it hit. Unfortunately, striking that range officer and they were um, ultimately pronounced deceased by arriving EMS. Um, as far as any, uh, you know, emergency medicine that was administered to this individual uh, before EMS arrived, I don't know. I don't know if there was any administered. Um, by the sound of things, there probably wouldn't have been a whole lot they could do for him anyway. Uh, very unfortunate, very tragic accident. Local authorities are doing their investigation. Um, I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty sure that USPSA is probably also going to be looking into this incident uh, if they haven't already and we may see some changes coming although I'm not really sure what you could possibly do about this. So that brings us to today's topic being emergency medicine. Now I am not a certified uh, emergency medical technician or anything like that. I do know a little bit about uh, about medicine. Uh, the other part of Lambs Hill USPSA, my father, uh, is a retired firefighter of over 30 years experience. He was a paramedic also for a good portion of that time. So I know a little bit about medicine, but I am not, uh, this video is not medical training or medical advice or anything. If you want medical training, seek out actual accredited medical training. One of the best things you can get that in my opinion, everybody in the world should have is CPR first aid certification. Um, you know, it, it's a simple tool. You can learn it and, and get certified in it in a day. I believe the American Red Cross actually has um, online courses now where you can get your CPR first aid certification right through the internet. Personally, not really a fan of that myself. I think you should have hands-on learning, but I'm more of a hands-on learner myself. So anyway, basic thing you can do CPR first aid. So as far as what I've seen, um, there are a lot of ranges out there that don't have any sort of uh, medical kit whatsoever. 
I have uh, this one, this big old bag um, that I keep running my pickup truck. Uh, my pickup, when, I, when it's at the range, is always unlocked. I know exactly where this is. It's in an easily accessible location, and it's also in a location where it's very easy to tell somebody where this kit is if I need to send someone to my truck to get it for me. Um, you know, driver's side, rear door, underneath the seat. You open the rear door, there's the big orange bag under the seat, grab it, pull it out. That's pretty much it. Um, obviously, one of the things that some of you may have noticed I carry on my person when I'm at the range is the orange tourniquet. This is a cat style tourniquet. Uh, this is not an actual genuine cat tourniquet by North American Rescue. I will be getting one of those. This one is. This is a cat gen 3. Um, and this one I actually keep in my cargo pocket when I'm at the range or even in everyday life because you never know. Even when I'm at work at my normal daily job, I keep this in my in my cargo pocket. This one I keep on the belt at the range when I'm out shooting. Uh, and I also keep another one of those in the side pocket of this big, big med bag here. Another thing that I always carry with me is a blowout kit, or what I would call a blowout kit. So basically this is just an old pouch I don't even remember where I've got it. I've had this thing for like 15 years. This stays in my cargo pocket also with the uh, with this cat tourniquet. So essentially in here, I've got a CPR shield. I've got nitrile gloves. Always go nitrile if humanly possible uh, because there are people uh, out there that do have allergies to latex. So even if you don't have an have a allergy to latex, the person that you may be, may be doing first aid or CPR on may be allergic to it. Inside the big pouch, I've got uh, some roll gauze. I've got a triangular bandage. I've got a survival rescue space blanket. Never know when you may need that. Uh, I've got some uh, two by two uh, sterile gauze pads, and then I've got a uh, what they call a combine pad. It's a five by nine inch, kind of like a trauma dressing sort of deal. So that's what I carry on my person. Um, like I said, whether I'm at the range or in everyday uh, carry. Also in my range bag itself, I have a twin pack of hyphen chest seals. That way they are on the range, okay? You can do a lot with a tourniquet as long as it's an extremity, say arm, leg, something like that. If you need to patch up, unfortunately, have to patch up a gunshot wound to a chest or something like that, these can be your best friend. Um, you know, this is, obviously this is the two pack. Um, these do have an expiration date. These ones are good till 2023. So I got a couple more years on them, um, but I did get the two pack. That way you have one for an entrance wound, one for an exit wound. And these stay in my range bag on the range. This is never more than, you know, 10, 20 yards away. This, as I said, I carry on, on my person. So again, just to, to wrap up, this is what I carry. Um, obviously I'm, you know, adding and subtracting stuff. There is stuff in this big bag, and I may go through this bag in another video. Um, there's stuff in this bag that I will never use. You know, it's it's more um, EMT type stuff, uh, you know, stethoscope. Uh, there's a blood pressure cuff in here. I'll probably never use that. Uh, what else do I have in here? <laughs> Airway devices, OPAs. I'll never use these. I'm not an EMT. But if I ever decide to become an EMT, um, 
then those may be very helpful. But that stays in the truck. All this other stuff, the tourniquets, the blowout kit stays on my person. Notice I always carry two tourniquets. And if you look at where this one is mounted, I've got my, my firearm holster here and the the rig normally sits like this. Okay, I got my holster on my left side, my mag holder, my primary mag holder is in front. The tourniquet sits almost directly behind that, right in the center of my back. Why is that important? The reason I have it centrally located in the back is so I can reach it with either arm. You never know. I'm left-handed, something may happen, a gun may blow up in my hand, I may, you know, working as an RO, accidentally get shot in the arm or the hand or something. Now this, this whole side is immobilized. I can't use it. I need to still be able to reach that tourniquet. Same reason as I carry this one in my right cargo pocket. I can obviously reach it from the right side, but if I can't use my right hand, I can also get it from the left side. Um, so that is pretty much it. If you want to learn a lot more. Um, obviously, there are some great channels on YouTube. Um, Prep Medic is one, and I normally don't name drop channels, but Prep Medic is a good one. He's got a lot of good content out there. I'll link him in the description below. Um, Skinny Medic is another one. There's, there's all kinds of them. But if you really want to get in depth with this, take an actual accredited EMS, you know, EMS training course. Um, even if it is just basic first aid CPR, that's that's one of those skills that you hope to never have to need, but you may need it at some point. And if you have that skill, you may be the only person in attendance at your supermarket when the guy in front of you falls to the ground in line of a heart attack. There may be 50 people standing around 49 of them have their cell phones out recording it or screaming at the dispatcher for 911 saying somebody's having a heart attack, get here fast. You may be the only person that actually has the skills and the knowledge to save that person's life before EMS arrives. So that is it from the top of Lambs Hill. Again, like, share, subscribe. I do appreciate it. Um, Numbers on the channel are going up. We just hit 3,000 uh, total views uh, the other day, so I am quite excited about that. Next goal is 5,000. Let's try to get there as fast as we can, guys. Uh, so like, share, subscribe. Links down in the below, uh, in the description below to all of the, um, the gear that I use. Um, Hunter's HD Gold, CR Speed, Ghost Holsters, Outdoor Dynamics, Glock, AMG Labs, um, Techware USA. I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. If I am, I do apologize, but links will be in the description below. That is it from the top of Lambs Hill. As always, I always end my videos with this, but today is, uh, this video is, I, I take it a little more to heart. Shoot safe, guys.